Moving on now, and throughout all the political chaos of the past few years, Australia's largest infrastructure program has been quietly rolling out. The National Broadband Network, designed to bring our internet up to speed, is now installed in more than half a million homes. But the current NBN is a different beast to the uh, fibre to the premises superfast network originally proposed. The government has opted for a cheaper but quicker rollout. Joining us is the Communications Minister Malcolm Turnbull and Shadow Communications Minister. Mr. Jason Clare. Good morning to you both. And Good morning. Thanks for being here so early. Um, Malcolm, Australia is currently ranked 56th in the world, I believe, for internet speeds. Um, you know, <laughs> the advertisements out there saying even Slovenia is faster. Not, not that the Slovenians don't have a right to super fast but internet. Slovenia, of course, um, is the centre of uh, it's IT a uh, progress and innovation. Uh, Kazakhstan, I Kazakhstan, think, is the other, yeah. is the other uh, one well, that's it's often promoted as being great. Boy, it's got 100 can gigabits I, per second. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you this? <laughs> uh, where, where will our um, your proposed fibre to the node network see us ranked when it's complete and how would that compare to Labor's proposed fibre to the premises model? Well the approach that we're taking will see Australia have a world-class network that will ensure that uh, over 90% of people in the fixed line footprint, that's which is about 93% of the mm -hmm. country, uh, will have 50 megabits per second or higher, most of them higher in fact, and they'll have it on a mix of technologies, fibre, uh, HFC, fibre to the node, fibre to the basement. All we are doing, the only thing we're doing with the NBN, but it's a big thing, mm. is giving the company the flexibility to use a mix of technologies so that they can get the project rolled out at the speeds that people value and will pay for and need uh, at a much lower cost and much sooner. So that's so that is that that's what it's all about. So if you want fibre to the premise, <coughs> you can you can get that you're if well, you're willing to pay extra. We will, well, there'll be a fi there will be a fibre on demand product, but you see. I, to be honest, in, I don't think there's going... There'll be very little demand for it, if any, other than people who want to boast about it. Because you, you, you've got to remember that bandwidth, line speed, is only of value to you insofar as it allows you to do something. Yeah, sure. You know, if you have... If you can do everything you need to do with 20 megabits per second, having uh, 100 megabits per second or a gigabit per second doesn't actually add any value to you. Sure. And that's the... So getting that... Uh, identifying what likely demand is going to be, what people want and value, and if you think about it, it's a function of the number of applications you'd use at any time. Sure. So if you've got a two-person household, obviously you're going to use, have less peak demand than, you know, a family with four teenagers, for mm. example. Mm. So, Jason, what do you feel that we're missing out on by not <coughs> having this to the premises um, procedure? Uh, and we know that, that this cost-benefit uh, cost analysis that was released last week mm. said that, that, that your mode was going to cost $15 billion more. So why do you think it was worth that extra money? Well, this is the biggest and most important infrastructure project in Australia. You know, it's going to change the way we live, it'll change the way we work. More people work from home, it'll change education and health. You know, in health, for example, we're all getting older. Uh, time in hospital is expensive. Things like the NBN will mean that people can be at hospital a shorter period of time and monitored at home. Uh, people will be able to stay at home longer before they go into aged care. All of these things are terribly important. We've got to roll out the NBN as quick as we can. I've been critical of the NBN and said that it's rolled out too slow. Mm. It's still too slow. It's rolling out slower today well, that, that, that's than, not true, than it was it's last rolling, year. It's rolling out at a 50... It's rolling out... The 12-week rolling average is about 6,000 premises per week. It was a little over 4,000 uh, under the... Well, you in, know, in, in brownfield the premises, 10 weeks before the election, it was rolling out an average of about 4,000 brownfield premises mm. a and week. It's now, now 6,000. And, and it's now 2,900, no, according to right. the statistics you released well, this week, Mel. If I can just correct that, because this is, a, this is an important point. <clears throat> under the previous government, they were releasing areas claiming that they had been covered when hardly any of those premises could actually order a service. So what the company has done, and that's on their website, they made it very clear, is that areas are not released as ready for service until 90% of the premises in a particular precinct are passed, which is not the case in the old days. And from the 1st of October, we're adding a further condition that they won't be released ready but for it, it's, service. It's still no, too no, slow. No, 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 it's hang still on. too slow. Can, can so we've got to speed it up. We've got to speed it Jason, the problem with your... Look, it's not your fault. It's Stephen Conroy's fault. The problem <laughs> under the previous government was it was a policy of fibre to the press release, not fibre to the premises. 
And what we're doing is restoring this business to a practical, commercial, sensible basis. So when, they, when we put a site up and say, yes, it's ready for service, it actually is. Can we, and people can, we can call up and get, get, a, get, get broadband. You, all right, we're arguing currently about how fast it's being rolled out. <coughs> sure, that's an issue. We've got to but it assuming up. we're all going to get there eventually, we want to know what we're getting. Now, uh, you say for most people, uh, Minister, you know, 50 megs per second is going to be ample. And, you know, for people like us, the most we want to do is watch YouTube videos, maybe download movies, that kind of thing. Um, you know, share some big files with our friends. 50 megs is going to do it. What, you know, for, for, for future uses that we don't even envisage yet and for much bigger uses such as, well, I'm thinking about, you know, like a video editing company that might be sharing massive yeah, files sure. and doing that as a business. Is that going to cut it, you know, when we're operating <coughs> at, say, half the speed of Hong Kong, for example? Well, there, there are t two important points here. Firstly, uh, the most bandwidth intensive application is video. High, it's yep. high definition video yep. and in the future... 4K TV, assuming that uh, takes off. And so when you talk about e-health, for example, and e-health is very important, uh, monitoring somebody's vital conditions requires hardly any bandwidth at all. So it is basically video. Video is, uh, and video applications, is what drives bandwidth. Now, if you need for five, kilo, for five megabits per second to deliver high-definition video, you can get a lot of high-definition video with uh, 50, 50 megs. megs. Now, as to your point, what about the applications that we don't know about, we can't even imagine? Our argument is, OK, let's, we can augment this network in the future. Remember, this is not like building the Harbour Bridge. When you build the Harbour Bridge, you can't add an extra lane every five years. With a telecom network, you are upgrading them all the time. All of the electronics in the NBN, regardless mm. of what technology you use, will be out of date in 10 years. So it's going to be upgraded all the time. It, you know, it's the same reason that Japan's doing this, and South Korea's doing it, and Singapore's doing fibre to the premises, because they know that it's going to be to their advantage long term. It's a little bit like electricity. A hundred years ago it was just to switch on the light, and now it's for things like air conditioning, for TV. Charge your car. Yeah, mm. computer. All of that sort of stuff. All of those things will be invented because the technology will be there. Because Malcolm's saying that we only need 50 uh, megabytes. You're suggesting 100. Do you still stick by that, that we need 100 to All, be able already. to... 20% of people that are on the NBN right now are ordering 100 megabits per second. Right. You know, so people are ordering it because they want that speed. And we, and by the way, we're we can, we, we, can uh, we are delivering 100 megs over fibre to the node right now. Or what I say, 197. Sure. But you can only guarantee 25. Well, no, that's not, that's, that's not, that is not the case. Provide 100 we are, megabit we are, product. We are saying we are we will wherever 100 megs can be provisioned, it will be it will be available. But can I just can I just make a, this a product that you can buy? If it's available on that particular uh, technology, HF, I mean, there's eight, there are 100 meg products but available on, on HFC node. now. If it's available on, H, on if it's available on fibre to the node, then people will be able to buy it. But the the but the, the critical thing we've got to remember is that these networks can be and will be upgraded. And you see, if if Jason's yep. argument is to say, let's invest 30 billion dollars or 20 billion dollars, pick your number. Uh, more today to cater for the needs of 20 years time what he's saying is that's 20 years in which we're not going to get a return on that massive additional investment and my point is why don't we wait and see how the demand emerges and if it does emerge make the investment then with the technology of the future, mm. not the technology of today. It does get down to a philosophical debate then about <clears throat> the extent to which technology itself drives innovation um, and not necessarily the other way around. Yeah, and, but and, and if I could just make your point about the video editing company, I mean, mm. obviously, businesses that need very They're high speed bandwidth, yep. they will get it. I mean, but you can't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't provide the same bandwidth to every household in Australia that you need for a massive well, data centre. Well, well, just just to put this in perspective, we're talking about a $40 billion project. The paid parental leave scheme is going to cost $62 billion over the next 10 yeah. years. Which one do you think is going to be more important for Australia's economy and deliver more productivity and more participation? Mm. It's the NBN. We do have to leave it there, gentlemen, sadly. Can I ask you that we, at some point in the very near future, discuss our relative positions on online piracy mm. as well? Sure, absolutely. Um, that, that Love to. Because obviously the MBN is going to enable a hell of a lot more of that. Mm. Well, Malcolm and I, we're all, <laughs> we're all, we're all against online piracy. The, the 
issue is what is the best means of tackling it. And I've got a forum on Tuesday, which will be streamed on the web, in which I've got the key players from the, yep. you know, the rights owners, copyright owners, the telcos, uh, consumer groups, and a big audience. And we're uh, just going to get to your friends to agree. Well, sure, we would yeah, love, we'd to, love get to get you both together to look at the various yeah. means we're that we can use to do that. We're um, sure you don't want to be in bed on a Saturday morning. You want to be here with us, so yeah, we'll get you back to chat about that. Great. Thank you. Thank you both for Thank coming you. in. Thanks Still to come on weekend.